So what I'm going to do now is go over the first in-class assignment that we're working on, which is called AI-day1.ex1.doc. AI and uh, is it big enough? For you? Actually, it is big enough for you guys to see, which is really cool, actually. Uh, so what are we going to do here? You're going to click on this link right here, and if you click on the link, it's going to take you to the Alan Turing's 1950s page. And the page, page, document. This is the original article, by the way. This is called, this was printed in 1950 in Computing Machinery and Intelligence. This is his original article. It's not that long. You might actually find it interesting. Read the article. It's task number one. Might take you a few minutes if you don't have a computer. <laughs> you might have to share with somebody else if you're going to participate in this. After you read the article in the paper, so read the article here. In the paper, he discusses several different objections to his proposal. He, he objects to his proposal, actually. Uh, enterprise and uh, his test for intelligence. The Turing test is what I talked about before. Can we tell the difference between, can the operator tell the difference between the computer and the, and the machine, excuse me, and the human, or on the other side of the window that they can't see? Which objections still carry weight? So. The author actually discusses objections. So, so which objection still carries weight? Are his refutations valid? The things he thought were kind of like not really, not really relevant. Are they valid or not? And can you think of new objections arising from developments since he wrote the paper? So he criticizes himself in here and says, well, can we really tell if something is rational? My criticism, my personal criticism to it is, how do you define rational? And do humans, if humans don't act rational, can you blame a computer for not acting rational in terms of the test? And if it's not rational, it doesn't pass the test? So that's kind of an objection I have to it personally, but you might have a different one. And there's many different angles that you can work with on this. So you can think of the different objections in the paper. He predicts that by year 2000, which is kind of interesting. It's like that 1984 book. Then when 1984 came out, we went, how much of this stuff is really true? And George Orwell, who wrote a book called 1984 several, several decades ago. <laughs> and then when 1984 arrived, we went, well, do we have this? Yes, we have Big Brother spying down on us. We have this. But yes, we have the internet. Yes, we had world disaster. We had diseases. We had all sorts of things. All that stuff actually happened, which was kind of interesting. But he predicted this like way centuries ago. But Anyway, so this guy, Alan Turing, predicted the year 2000 as a futuristic date. And he predicted that by year 2000, a computer would have 30% chance of passing the five-minute Turing test with an unskilled interpreter. Like, the value of this test would go down and down and down. So what chance do you think the computer would have today? And what about in another 50 years? And is the computer still passing it? So it's kind of a philosophical question. There's no right or wrong answer. Do not cut and paste off of the internet to answer this. I'm not looking for an internet answer. You read the paper. Read this again to yourself a couple more times and you'll digest the concepts. Answer how you feel. <laughs> it's your opinion. There's no right or wrong answer. So what do you need to do? There's no page length here. There's no word length here. I want a paragraph or two. I don't want, you have to spend a lot of time reading this stuff. So, and a lot of time thinking about this stuff. And you can talk amongst yourselves and come up with your own ideas. But each person needs to write their own ideas. And it needs to be their own ideas. When you write it out, don't think volume. Right, give me a paragraph or two. You know, like two or three hundred words or something. Put it in a Word document, upload it to the EMS, and you're done with this one. So this is the one we're working on now. Um, could give you like, uh, well, the reading part's going to take a little bit of time. It's, believe it or not, almost 3 o'clock. So how about we uh, reconvene at 4? Is that good for everybody? If you want to reconvene earlier, we can always reconvene earlier. The idea is to, did you say 4.30? Do I hear 4.30? Let's talk about 4.30 then. Perfect. Because then we'll do the other exercise, which is not so bad, but I have to give you a few things on the other exercise. So. We'll reconvene briefly at 4.30, and then we'll get you going on the exercise number two. So you don't have to spend all the day here listening to me. You can do stuff on your own. So, Okay, any other questions? Or any questions, I should say. This will be run through turnitin.com, by the way. So if you write it yourself, it'll be your own words.
There's absolutely no way you're going to find a match with that. If you cut and paste off of the internet, then you're going to have problems. Well, how could you cut and paste your own ideas off of the internet? Unless your own opinion's been expressed by many other people on the internet. So, I'm getting advanced in the way I'm doing this. I'm picking assignments that you can't do it with. <laughs> so, all right, so we'll reconvene at 4.30. How's that? I'm also going to hang out here, obviously. I'm not going anywhere. To help you, so holler. And if you miss the attendance right now, is your opportunity to get on the second wave of the afternoon attendance. <laughs>